Okay, uh, let's take a look at preparation for the kingdom. Take a look at adversity and afflictions, the fiery trials, disturbing the social order, and we'll close it off with the words of our Lord. We'll begin by looking at a passage in Isaiah. So in Isaiah 30 it says this, Though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner any more. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers, and thy ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it, when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. Now here's what I want to say uh, about this scripture. This is the scripture the Lord gave me back in somewhere about 1992 to prepare me for the trials I would endure. The very day the scripture began to work in me, I heard the Holy Spirit say, This is the way, walk ye in it. And at that point, I pulled my truck over to the side of the road and began to weep and cry uncontrollably. Arguably, for the next 20 years were the worst years of my life. And it was at those years that my Christianity was a sham because it was solely concerned about me and what I was going through and how to get out of it. And it was not, it had a focus on self and it was not a focus on the Lord and what God was doing. I didn't yet know the scriptures that said reproofs of instruction are the way of life and he that refuses reproof errs. So I had to uh, learn by going walking through the afflictions and adversity uh, and see that it was refined in me. Job said this, Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? He said, The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And when I think about the story of Joseph all through his life and the troubles that uh, Joseph went through, it came to a conclusion at some point when it, whenever he interpreted the dream for the cupbearer and the baker. And this is all he had to say. But think on me when it shall be well with thee, and show kindness, I pray, unto me, and make mention of me unto Pharaoh, and bring me out of this house. For indeed I was stolen out of the land of Hebrews, and here also I have done nothing that they should put me in the dungeon. So you can see there's no guile in Joseph's heart. There's no indication that he was bitter or trying to... Uh, fight his way through, but he had uh, the, the trials and afflictions that he went through, 13 years in prison, being innocent, had totally uh, cleansed his heart and made him uh, in right standing with God. Peter said it this way, uh, Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you, but rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, for he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. And Paul said it this way, he said that persecutions and tribulations that you endure is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, that ye may be partakers of his holiness. You know, the scriptures even go on to say that it, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. He says, arm yourselves likewise with the same uh, mind. He that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. And Revelation says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. It goes on to say, if you be with you without chastisement, that look at this, you are not sons. You don't belong to God if you be without chastisement. When I look at the psalmist and how he talked about Joseph, it says, He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold as a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters. He laid in iron until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord tried him. We go back to the New Testament and find out what James says. He said, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he has is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised to those who love him. 
Next, let's look at disturbing the social order. Okay, so in October of 2001, Harry Hammond was preaching in Burnmouth Town Center holding a sign bearing these words. There's the sign right there. Can everybody see that sign right there? Holding this sign drew an angry crowd of about 40 people who became violent toward Mr. Hammond for displaying what they saw as an insulting message. There's the message right there. He had that on a sign. Well, here's what happened to uh, Mr. Hammond. It was ruled that he acted unreasonably in holding up a sign he knew to be offensive. It goes on to say that under the hate speech laws in England, any communication which is intended to harass, alarm, or distress someone is forbidden. So there you have it, upsetting the social order. Any communication intended to distress someone is forbidden. Now, I want to go to Scripture and look at what the Scriptures indicate in the book of Acts regarding upsetting the social order. If we were to turn and look at Paul in Acts chapter 19, this would be when, while he was in Macedonia. Uh, the disciples blocked him from speaking to the whole crowd for fear of a, a riot. Paul persuade, This is upsetting the social. Paul persuaded the people in Macedonia, saying that those be no gods which are made with hands, and that angered the uh, craftsmen that made these shrines and made these idols. And it says the whole city was in confusion and the assembly gathered together. They were confused and some didn't even know why they had come together. So here Paul upset the whole city just by speaking the truth. Uh, regarding idols, actually uh, repeating the first commandment. On another occasion, we look in Acts, and it, it says a certain damsel uh, had an unclean a spirit of divination, and she kept following Paul and Silas around, saying, "These men are servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation." Here is a demonic spirit telling the truth here. And it kind of grieved Paul, and he turned around and said, I command thee in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And what happened? He cast out an unclean spirit here, and they grabbed him. The owners of that uh, slave girl grabbed him and brought them before the magistrates. And the magistrates commanded that they should be beaten and cast them into prison. Now, there's no possible way that you can say you're a believer and an authentic believer and not step on toes while you're walking out your faith. It goes even further. Let's look at if they cannot find you, they'll find any believer. If we were to just look at, uh, at those associated with believers, it says they were, they were looking for, to get Paul and Silas together. Uh, and so they couldn't find them. So the scriptures say, But those which believed not moved within, we took unto them certain lewd fellows of a baser sort, and gathered a company, and set all the city in an uproar, and assaulted the house of Jason. They couldn't find Paul and Silas, so they just grabbed any believer. And it goes on to say that, that they grabbed him, and uh, they brought them before the magistrates, and they find him. So here was someone that's just a believer standing innocently and the social order is being disturbed. So they'll grab any believer, not just those that are leaders. Next, let's take a look at uh, the words of our Lord. And I'll pick this up. These are the words of Jesus. Many bulls have compassed me, strong bulls of Bashan, have beset me round. They gaped upon me with their mouths as ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax that is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a pot shirt, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws and thou hast brought me into the dust of death. For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, they pierced my hands and feet. 
I may tell all my bones. They look and stare at me. They part my garments among them and cast lots for my vesture. So you can see even Jesus had to go through much persecution and tribulation. And John says it this way. These are the words of our Lord. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you. Reproofs of instruction are the way of life. And I will close it with that.